As I insert the shaft, the sucking noise should stop. Hello Jeepists, it's Green Dot 319 How are we all doing? Welcome to part two of the Carter 539 rebuild videos. Okay, so first things first. If you haven't watched part one, click up in the top right hand corner now. That'll open up another window which will take you to the first part of this video. And in that video, there's also another link which will take you to a video which shows you how this whole carburetor works. So those are well worth watching so you know what's going on if you're working your way through a carburetor. So have a look up there. Um, second thing, thanks a lot everybody as well. If you like the video and you think the information's good, give it a thumbs up if you like it and uh, click on subscribe as well. That just lets me know that you're appreciating what I do and it means that I'm going to make more videos as well. But let's have a look then at uh, throttle body today and the idle circuit in the jeep so let's move on to those then and see what we can manage okay right moving on to part d whichever group part d is well it appears to be the accelerator pump so install pump jet and pump jet plug assembly okay so the pump jet this is we need the body now so we just check it's still clean and looking all right okay so the pump jet is the actual jet in the side where is he it's the one which goes down there that's the pump jet that's where the fuel which is pushed by the accelerator pump sprays directly into the uh, carburetor so it's in there so we install that jet and then it says and jet plug assembly and then we blank it off with a plug on top there so let's get our um, pump jet out our used and clean pump jet, here he is. They've got part numbers all stamped in the top of them so you can work out if they're correct or not. Like I said before, just double check it, make sure everything looks fine. Yeah, looks pretty good. It's been ultrasonically cleaned. And it's gonna be screwed in all the way down there to the bottom. So let's find a screwdriver which is correct for this. Now, one of them I've modified because I said I haven't got the correct tools, so when you're putting these in, most screwdrivers have a shoulder here, which means that they're too wide to go down here, okay? This one would be, okay? So what I've done is I've shaved off the shoulder here so we can get all the way in without damaging the threads. So that's just a, a tip there. Attack a screwdriver with a grinder and you can use it properly to go in here. So let's have a look. See, that's a good size for it. That's a good size for that one. So drop him, boop, let's work him in. Is there a bit of rubbish on that? No, there isn't. Feeling good. So this will appear, this will stick out right at the bottom there when it's screwed all the way in, okay? There's no gasket or anything which goes down there. Now I've got to make sure it goes in straight because if it starts going off to the side. Okay, I can see it's starting to come out there. So, and it's starting to tighten up a little bit. So keep on going. Now the thing about these is they have to be seated properly, but at the same time you don't want to whale on them because when you start whaling on them you start stripping them and once you strip these little brass jets and things like that inside these castings, they're a real pain to get out. Okay, they're made of brass and they do come out, you can use easy outs, you can use do all sorts of things, but you don't want to be doing that, you want, you want them to come out um, easily. So I'm just going to put a bit of pressure on it again, like I said before, so pushing and turning. When it starts to sort of go and move that means it's actually getting pretty tight okay because it's it suddenly moves in the casting so yeah there we go that's as tight as we want to go we don't want to be pushing it in too far so you can just see the jet nozzle is just sticking out there so that's the pump jet in there uh, and jet plug assembly right let's get a plug assembly there's one that one's a bit chewed up that one's a little bit better, yeah. So, on he goes. These are the brass World War II ones. They're a bit chewed up, unfortunately, these ones. They're not bad, actually. They're not the worst. But, um, there he goes. Yeah, these ones, are they're a little bit chewed up, but they're not bad, actually. They've cleaned up quite well. So, give them a tweak. There we go. That's in. That's the um, pump jet is in there so that's the pump jet installed install discharge discharge disc check assembly okay so we need to come underneath there's a couple of bits which are going to go in here okay and these are these sort of check valves when you're doing the accelerator pump it pushes it down it mashes it down and it allows the fuel to be sprayed out this way but it doesn't allow air and fuel to come out the different ways and to flow back into the bowl or be fired out into the bowl so there's two little 
discharge, there's a, a check a disc check assembly. There's also a ball assembly as well. And they all go in this one hole here, okay? So the disc assembly, as it says, has a disc in it. So it's this little guy here. So let's give it a blow. So it blows one way and doesn't go the other way. So he goes in first. So we're just gonna drop him in and do him in. Let's find a screwdriver which is appropriate again for it. So I'm changing my screwdrivers as I go through to make sure I'm using the appropriate one, which is giving me the best purchase on it without wrecking it. So let's drop him in. Boop. Right, it's stopped, but this the shoulders on this are bottoming out, so we've got to go to our thin one again. So if you if you carried on screwing it in there without realizing it was the shoulders touching the casting, you would start to damage the casting. So you just got to be careful and make sure you use the correct screwdriver. Look, this is going in much better now, just because I changed the correct screwdriver. So screwing him all the way in. Going in a long way. Okay, starting to bottom out there. Okay, so that's in there tight. Install intake ball check assembly. So now here comes the second part of this. This is the ball, and then here it is. You can hear that little ball clanging around in there. So he drops in on top, so that's above that one. So he's in the bottom, he goes in. Boop. There we go. Trying to do this at an angle with a camera here and me over here is, is, and look at the same time down it is not easy. I can't see it half the time. I'm just doing it by feel. Okay, so I think we can get the bigger screwdriver in here, which has got better purchase because it's not going to strip the sides on this one. Yeah, that's a better screwdriver. Okay, that's already actually pretty seated. Yeah, that's really seated. So we haven't stripped it or damaged it and it's all seated nicely, okay? So we've got our two little check assemblies in there. Sweet. Install pump check strainer and strainer plug assembly. So we've got the biggest, the biggest disc here and we need a strainer as well, okay? So there's a little fuel strainer to stop you mashing uh, rubbish fuel straight into the engine. Here he is. This nice clean little strainer. That goes in there, sits in like that. And this will actually mate with the top of the um, uh, this uh, ball assembly here. So you've got to make sure it's fairly round, okay? Because it actually has to sit on it properly. So, well, roundish. Round enough, I think, is the answer to that. Put him down like this. Feels all right. Making sure I'm not cross-threading. <laughs> it's not doing particularly well here. <laughs> that feels better. Then get a big screwdriver. Monster screwdriver. And seat him. There we go. You could, of course, put that little um, strainer in first and seat it on this one and then put this one in. But I think it's better. It needs to fit in this um, plug assembly first and then it sort of aligns itself with this one here. That's really tight. That's tight. So they're all in there. The jet's down here. The disc is here. The ball is here. The strainer is here. And then the fuel, that's a drilled passageway. The fuel comes in from the bowl through here. OK, so that's you sort of accelerate a pump, and that's a little equalization port there. So that should be that. That is assemble parts in group D. That's it. Cool, we're getting somewhere with this. Always the best way to build carburetors is drinking beer at the same time, especially um, English ale, not Budweiser or whatever American stuff you guys <laughs> drink. This is proper stuff. Right, so this, we're coming on to a really critical bit now, okay? This is the, um, the throttle body, okay? Or the base of the carburetor. Now, this is install throttle shaft and lever assembly. This is it. 
Now, part of this is we're matching up the patina of these parts, okay? Because we're doing this one as a, a good use carburetor. So one which is inside is perfect and, you know, works perfectly. But outside, it looks like it's been used a little bit. So I'm trying to match up the patina of all these parts, okay? One of the interesting things about these is you can tell how worn they are. Well, A, by just looking at them and seeing if it, it dishes in there where it sits inside this throttle body. But B, because it has this coating on it here, and when they're worn, the coating disappears. And you can see this is where it's wearing on this one is just here. This is not worn at all, this shaft. This shaft is really nice, actually. I'm not sure why I didn't use it in, <clears throat> in my Jeep, actually, because I think this is a better shaft than the one I've got in my Jeep. Just slightly, an slightly annoying, isn't it? But anyway, so the problem is, if this shaft is worn and this body is worn here, rather than the air coming through the top of the carburetor and then being metered, because a lot of the fuel metering occurs, around this little butterfly, this throttle butterfly, which sits inside this body here. And if it's able to get in around a big gap here, if this is worn and this is worn, the air comes in here and goes straight into the engine down here, it's not able to be used to draw any fuel out of the little holes it's supposed to go through. It's, it gets in a different way. And what that means is your mixture runs really lean, okay? So this is one of the major problems with these carburetors is that air, when these, when these get worn, air comes in through here rather than going through where it's supposed to here, okay? So let's just have a quick look. This one doesn't appear to be very worn at all, okay? And the measurement of it is coming out at uh, 31, okay? If we go to the end here where it doesn't wear, Yeah, 3110. 3110. 3110 perhaps. Yeah, so it's it's barely worn this one. This is good for what we're doing here, okay? And this body as well um, isn't particularly worn as well. If we just put it in quick, it doesn't rattle around or anything like that. And a really easy way to tell how worn it is, okay, is to put your mouth over the end here, make a suction and um, you can hear whether it leaks or not. It's, it's a really simple thing to do. So if you have a listen here, right, I'll take this out, right, and I'll suck it and you can hear the noise. And as the shaft goes in, <laughs> oh my God, the sucking noise should stop, okay? So as I insert the shaft, the sucking noise should stop as it, as it fills the hole. <laughs> okay, stand by, let, let, me, let me get back, uh, let me get back in uh, control here, okay? Right, so, stick him in. See, no air leak. If when you did that, <laughs> if when you, did, that's ridiculous, isn't it? If when you did that, you had a sucking noise, a hissing noise around here, and you could feel you were able to draw in air from here, then you would know it was leaking and it, it was no good, okay? That's not the end of the world for one of these. What you can do is get hold of a new shaft. You know, you just have to find one via eBay or what have you. Um, but with the bodies here, you can get a machinist to, you know, mill this all out or whatever and put a um, insert in there and take it back to the correct diameter so you can keep your throttle body still alive, okay? So it's not the end of the world, but they do need to be fixed. If it leaks here, if when you suck it, you, you can draw through a, a good amount of air, okay? You could see there that one didn't let really anything through at all, but if you can feel the air coming through, it's leaking, it's not good. You wanna sort that out and just have a machinist mill this out and put an insert in there is only going to cost a couple of dollars or whatever. It's well worth it, trust me, because if it leaks here and it makes your mixture lean, it's really going to annoy you. No matter the work you've done up here and all the work you put into it, if it leaks here, it's useless, okay? So there you go. That's that's a tip there. Sucking, making, <laughs> sucking the shaft is, is the way to work it out. Jeez. Okay, right. Where were we? Install throttle shaft and lever assembly. Okay, it is. Back out throttle lever adjusting screw, that would be here. Well, it is backed out, it's completely uninstalled. Then install throttle valve and throttle valve screws. Be sure trademark on valve is towards the idle port side of carburetor view when viewed from the manifold side. Great, okay. So we have to turn it upside down because this is the manifold side and then the idle port is on that side. Those are the idle port down there, okay. so. From this side, with that there, it says that the trademark, okay, here's our throttle butterfly. There's a trademark, you can just about see there, the C, um, on the valve is towards the idle port side of the carburetor. Okay, so it'll be idle port there, trademark there. That's how it's gonna be. So um, with valve screws loose, 
tap throttle valve lightly to centralize it in bore of carburetor, hold valve in place with fingers and securely tighten screws. New screws are recommended. Now that is true because I've had them break off inside these um, shafts and it really, it's, it's a real pain to get them out, okay? So we will be using new screws with this. So let's get this in here. It's a bit of a pain to do it and I'll try and, yeah, actually that went, <laughs> that went in fine today. Okay, so, oh, I said it went in fine. Have I got it? Right, it has to be to this. It has to be facing down this way. Mine went in, dropped in that way. So it has to be this way, which is annoying. There we go. Now he's working properly. Okay, sweet. So we put him in there. We've got our two little screws. So let's drop these guys in carefully. This is fun as well, getting getting these in without <laughs> dropping them. Obviously they're not magnetized. So <laughs> getting it all to stay in is a bit of a pain. It's gone over the wrong way now. Ah, come back. The butterflies drop down as well. Like I said, trying to do this and show you at the same time without having my big head in the way is, is a bit of a pain. So one of the ways I do it is to sort of let them fall into the holes and push them up. It's, it's quite difficult to sort of show. But I walk, walk it up using the screwdriver into the hole. Right, let's hold you closed. Okay, we've got those screws in there. Now the idea is in that they're in loose and we want to sort of waggle it and shake it around a little bit and tap the shaft to allow this butterfly to sort of centralize itself right in the center there, because it's got a bit of movement. The holes where it goes are elongated so you can move it around. So um, we've just given him a little tap. Let's tighten him up just a little bit. Start to make sure he's in the correct place. Right, sort of tightly, sort of tightly done up. Seems to be pretty centralized. Not bad. Okay, I've just swapped over um, throttle butterfly just to a different one there. There's actually not a huge amount of difference, but I just tried a different one. So put that in there. We put on the idle adjustment as well. That's the idle speed adjustment screw. He's gone in there as well. That should be tight when it goes in there. It shouldn't be loose. Right, so um, yeah, install idle adjustment screw and idle adjustment screw spring. Well. I've just called that the idle adjustment screw, but it's it's the speed screw. This is the idle adjustment screw here, okay? So, and the spring for it is here, and they go in there. So that's what does your idle mixture, okay? So it goes on there, and then should say uh, lean on the top. In he goes. There you go, he's fully seated. And to start it off with, it'll be one and a half turns out. So half, one, one and a half. There we go. So that's set up pretty much for start position. Now it says install idle port rivet plug. That's there. We've done that already. We wouldn't do that now. So that's already sorted out. Install insulator and new gaskets. Then install body on flange, tightening screws evenly and securely. Okay. So it's talking about putting on this. Um, onto here so that you can put the body on it. However, I'm going to keep it off just at the moment because we've still got to put quite a few little um, jets and needles in here and having this attached to it can get in the way a little bit. So we don't do that quite yet. So we'll, we'll just skip around that bit. So this is ready to go. But what it says then, so we've done that. We're now going to drop to this. Install low speed jet. Work jet well into seat by removing back and forth. Then install low speed jet plug assembly. So, okay, that's it. We're going to do the load speed jet. Now this one drops down here and the end of it will stick out down there. This one's really critical, okay? The load speed jet is really critical. This is the one that Carter says has to be accurate to a quarter of a thousandth of an inch. If you put anything down the load speed jet, apparently that's the end of it. Apparently that's, that's killed it and that's the end of it. So here is one. This is a low speed jet. You can see the end of it isn't completely nagged or anything like that. And... Um, what it actually says, if you read it, install low speed jet. Okay, so we do that. And then it says install idle well jet. Now, the problem with that is, as I found, is that the idle well, well, let's start here. The low speed jet goes all the way in there and then it will sit with the end poking out there. The idle well jet 
screws in here and goes all the way through and the end will poke out. You guys probably can't see particularly well. It'll poke out down there. Well, obviously, if you install the low speed jet first and the end of it sticks out here, you won't be able to then put in a jet to go all the way down to there because it will hit the end of this. So you have to put the idle well in first. You don't put the low speed jet in. So this is wrong. What they've written there is wrong. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not that important or anything like that. It's just annoying if you seat this properly because it says work jet well into seat by moving it backwards and forwards. So imagine you've been working it back in, getting it all in there and everything. It's all the way down here, hidden inside it. You know, it's not easy to access and perhaps you've damaged it a little bit, but you think, oh, it's in there now. I don't need to get it out. Perfect. And then you go to put the idle well in and find <laughs> that you've got to remove the blooming thing. So that's annoying. So little tip there. They got it slightly wrong. So let's get an idle well out of here. I'll just double check the part number on this just to make sure I'm doing it correctly. Make sure I've got the right thing. So this, sh I think this should be the idle well. And it says, let's see if we can find him. 4367? Yeah, 4367, that's what it says on here. 4367, idle well jet. Okay, this is the idle well jet, so I'm not wrong. This has to go in a long way. It goes in there, all the way in. So let's put this in first. Not what they say to do. They say to do it in an impossible way, which you don't want to do, trust me. So. Again, my shaved screwdriver. Oh, is actually going to be too big for this one. Which screwdriver did I use in here? Must have used a really small one. Perhaps it's this one. Yeah, maybe that... Even my shave screwdriver is uh, too big for this one. Right, I'm gonna have to turn it towards myself while I do this, just so I can concentrate and not damage it, because it's a bit tight here. Yeah, it's getting a bit too wide, that one. Let's try an even smaller one. Okay. This is the problem, as, as you go down screwdrivers, this one also needs shaving off here. They've got the right size flat on them, but the shoulders are too wide, so you have to go to a an incorrect size screwdriver just because the shoulders aren't wide. Now you're putting a small head into a larger cutout in it. It's much easier to damage it. So you don't really want to be doing this. It's slightly annoying. That's why I've said a couple of times the proper tools for this would be great. Or just some more screwdrivers you've, you've attacked with a grinder is a good idea. If you're going to be doing a couple of them like I am, it's well worth buying a set of screwdrivers, cheap ones and doing it, I suppose. So that you can hear it's starting to seat itself. It's going in a long way. Getting tighter. That's why it needs to be so clean as well for these threads. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, he's, I can just see him there. I think he has to go in a little bit further than that. I can't remember if this one sticks out slightly or not, but it feels pretty tight. I don't want to nadger it. No. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you can just see this one in there, just down the bottom. You can just see it. I don't think it comes out. You can just spot it. I don't want to do it any tighter than that because it might. Cool. Yeah, check that. All looks good. So this is a nice jet ready to go in there. So the threads look a bit damaged at the top here. So we'll just see how he winds in. Hopefully it's going to be okay. Yeah, it's feeling all right. Threads are just a touch damaged. So this one has to go down a long way as well, again. This one's the one which gets stuck quite a lot. And you you know, when you're taking them apart and you've got to get it out and it's all the way deep inside it. So it's a real it's a real pain in the bum. Right, are my shoulders getting stuck? Let's have a look. Just about, I can just about see the end coming out there. I think it needs to go in a bit further than that. Yeah, it does, definitely. There you go, see? Just took the screwdriver out, put it back in. See, it's all about, you know, making sure you're not putting the wrong force into it, feeling, feeling and checking. You can see it's going in further now. It's, it should be halfway down this one. That's how far it should go. So when it starts to get tight now, we know it's actually seating at the end. Okay. Yeah, that's seated. Now it says, work jet well into seat by moving backwards and forwards, then install low speed jet plug assembly. So 
they want you to tighten it in and then take it out again a little bit and, and work it in and out. So there you go, gave, work it in a bit more, right, and then undo it again without nadgering it. You can see why this one's a bit of a pain. Okay, I think this is it. There we go. It's tight in there without the ends being damaged, so that's good. And you can see it all the way down there, okay? Yeah, that's fine. It's not cross-threading. Just being really careful about not cross-threading stuff. You know, if, if threads are damaged and stuff like that, especially these are soft castings and brass plugs and things like that, you don't want to be working stuff in at an angle or cross-threaded or anything wrong or you just start damaging stuff. Sweet. Okay. That's that done. And there's a plug to go in there as well. So we've done this one. Yeah, there's one plug at the top and then there's another plug at the side. So that's all in there. That's good. Let's put you on. Cool. Cooking with gas. So that's all the idle stuff done then. Sweet. You can hear my um, check valves rattling around in there, which is good. Awesome. Great. Right. Let's keep on going. 